Hi guys, my name is Aspen and I'm in charge of the social media marketing for Tragopon. Here on this channel, I'll be posting at least one video a month where I'll be taking our products out in the field to do some wildlife photography. Today, I'd like to set up a simple feeding station in the garden using the Mono Photography Hide to get close to the birds. There'll be a couple of key things to consider when I'm setting up this hide and the feeding station. Which direction do I want the sun hitting the birds from? When am I likely to use the hide? Will I be using it in the morning or in the evening? I have to consider my background to get a nice, even, soft background and the distance of the hide to the bird feeding station. So let's take a little walk around the garden and have a look at some potential places. You see this is a fairly big garden I am in right now. There's a small part to it just behind me here, which does get a bit of late afternoon sun, very late. So, um, and that would also, if I do put, um, if I were to put a feeding station over here, I get a backlight and there's quite a few trees and things in the way behind there. So it wouldn't be a big time frame and I'm not sure I would want the birds backlit either. I think I'd rather have them front lit with the sun coming from behind me. So if we go through to the other part of the garden, it's back here. And this is the main, main bit, much bigger. You got a road just behind that wall, but like you see, you can barely see the cars coming by. Uh, the sun actually rises behind me here. If I put up a feeding station behind me here, and I got a nice green background with the hedge there, I just need to make sure that I make enough separation between the hedge and the feeding station so I can blur my background. So as I said, the sun will then rise from just where that car drove behind that birch tree here and it will continue over the house that way. So this is quite late in the year as well, so I should have quite nice light for quite a bit of the morning. So if I put it up here, I should at least get a couple of hours of good golden light. Let's see if we can find something to hang the feeders from. <music> idea is here just to get started. I don't know if this is going to work, but it'll give me something to start with once I actually spend some time in the hide and I can start observing the birds, see where they land, see how they behave. Then I can start tweaking, picking different branches, uh, different distances, height, everything. So just to start out with a very simple setup like this and then I can experiment. Now, I'm going to try on the lens that I'm going to be shooting with from the hide to see what kind of distance I need to be at. And then that will tell me where I'm going to put the hide itself. So I'm just going to put this on my camera, take a few test shots and see how blurred I can get the background. So I've taken a couple of test shots there and show you a few of the last ones that I took. That's the kind of blurred background that I've been getting there. Um, and that was at that was at f4 and I can go even lower to f2.8 with this. It took me less than five minutes to put up the hide and the rain cover on top of it. Now, let's have a look inside. Yeah. 
So one thing that's quite handy with this hide, is you can take off this cover. And that's what I'm gonna do now, because I'm gonna be sitting with a chair in here and I don't wanna damage the floor. I just don't need it. made for these hides so I can sit quite comfortably here you lean back relax every now and then and it's got side pockets for thermos lens We've got two of these one on each side and I'll show you guys I put up my tripod here now and uh, just take another test shot that I'm perfectly happy with it and then I can go out here tomorrow and hopefully shoot some birds few mornings since I've actually had any kind of a sunrise so I haven't spent any time in the garden hide yet. This morning there's potential for a bit more light but well, even if there's not I'm gonna spend a bit of time in there and uh, try and catch some garden birds. So, I've had to spend a little bit of time here now. There's been a good few birds up at the feeders. I've had some blue tits, some gray tits, robin, gold tit, um, some mizzen, a wren in the back. One of the main things I've noticed this morning when the light comes across is that the hide, the height of the hide, is actually casting a shade onto where I have the feeders. So, I had a suspicion that that could happen, but I was hoping that the sun was going to be a little bit higher. Um, and come at an angle just above. So it probably won't be very long until the sun actually is a little bit higher than the hide so that I get direct sunshine, get that golden light onto my feeders and the sticks that I want them to land on. Um, but I want the first available light in the morning to hit exactly where I have the birds. So that's the first thing I need to change. I need to change the direction so that maybe if I put it a little bit more at an angle, I get a bit more of a kind of side light. I've moved the feeder right here, and in between the feeder and the hedge, I have this little branch here that I'm hoping that they're gonna use. So they're not landing on the branch that I put out for them, but I'm creating some great opportunities for practice and flight shots. I have a direct view of the flight path that they use from the hedge to the feeder. see here this branch is just really lighting up it's lighting up the background and it's going to be very distracting when I do have a bird on there perched perfectly in the light hitting it so 
I'm going to move my whole setup a tiny bit over so that I get a nicer, smooth, green background. Right, it is time to wrap up this episode. That worked out really nicely. So for this project, I used the Mono Photography Hide by Tragopan, and I went with the net window here, uh, which gives me a lot more view to see through, to see what's going on. And since these are just garden birds, they're quite used to people, so they didn't mind that at all. Uh, a few things to consider that I learned along the way was that this hide created a bit of a shadow. Um, bit of a shade on the bird feeding station because I had it, the feeding station here first and then the hide behind it. I was hoping the sun was going to come over the hide but it didn't earliest in the morning so I decided to change it a little bit and put it at an angle so that gave me more side light in the morning. So for my flight shots I was shooting in full manual and I would go 32 hundredth of a second or 4 thousand of a second I would put my f-stop to 2.8 and I would put my ISO to auto because I would have sun coming and going, clouds would go in front of it, so it would be quite difficult to, to keep switching back and forth. So every time I would go for a portrait shot while I was shooting uh, quite fast, I would try if I had time to reduce my shutter and that would also then automatically reduce my ISO. Now for the setup uh, of the feeding station, I experimented quite a bit with these branches that I wanted the birds to land on because I didn't want to take photos or too many photos anyways of them on the feeder or even on this bigger thing here it's a little bit too too thick for the small birds uh, so I experimented a lot with positioning of these sticks I at first I had I had a stick over here I also had one over here from the feeder I experimented a lot with where to put these sticks and what I found was that the best spot where I had most success was directly above the feeder. I noticed that the great tits would land up on here and then just drop down to the feeding um, to feed here. So after I'd seen the great tits do that a couple of times I decided that I wanted to put a stick in right on top here and that allowed me to get some shots with some birds with a nice little clean branch like this um, I should create quite a, quite a nice composition. So that worked out really well. Um, one last thing that to consider was the background. Now I thought I had chosen quite a nice, even green background. What I did notice though was that when the sun hit in the morning, I had uh, this thing here, a pole, a fence pole here sticking out. And that would catch the light and make a really bright spot in my background. So again, <laughs> I had to change my setup a little bit. I had to move the whole feeding station a little bit so that whenever I did catch a bird exactly where I wanted it on my branch, I didn't get that in my background. That's it for me for this time. Please do subscribe to the channel. We'll be uploading uh, at least a video a month here using our products like this in the field, taking photos of wildlife. If you want to check out more of my videos, I also have my own YouTube channel, Aspen Helen. I'll put a link in the description below. If you have any questions or any suggestions yourself from experiences you've had with feeding stations in the garden, please leave comments below. And I'll see you in the next episode.